Yeah, we we were down 13 to 2 and said like, okay, now now is now is the chance to just try it out. Like, it's a dirty trick in my opinion. It's definitely not fair. It should probably be removed. It's just shameless of them. It definitely can't just go, you know, unquestioned. This isn't right. The problem is, you're never gonna get another boost that's that OP, but also wins you the whole map. What if you had a secret strategy that was so unprecedented, so dominant, that using it might not be worth it? Honestly, I, I don't know, I am genuinely speechless. It, it, it's made me so upset. When you finally used it, how would you feel? I mean, uh, the map is called Olaf Pass for a reason. Smith looking confused and dazed, and it's gonna be a follow-up and shot of shot on a voice bar. You gotta be kidding me, takes down Kirishima as well. Counter-Strike has always been a strategic game. But those strategies evolve, even on maps that have been around forever. Go AWPs, Fnatic, they're ready to shoot some ducks as they cross the middle. It's gonna be a challenge, and Apex, not in this lifetime. He is destroyed. But the boost that Fnatic used at DreamHack 2014 on Overpass was different. It's not an exploit, really. It's, it's just a broken map, apparently, and no one knew until now. And the lead up to it didn't help matters. We had a major issue in Counter-Strike with, you know, some cheating. Not only cheating accusations that are running rampant, but obviously we did have several top players get back banned. We need to talk about Flush It. I know that a couple of my teammates are convinced that <laughs> they, they think they cheat. I do not think Flush It cheats, um, but I think maybe in the past he might have... Flush Was Flusha aimbotting? Flush It. Flush It. Flush is not aimbotting. Oh my god, you're such a fucking sellout. I I'm thought you sorry. were the coolest dude I'm in the sorry. world. None of Fnatic's players had been banned. They had their fans, but they had even more detractors. It's always easy to hate on the top dog, and Fnatic was the best CSGO team in the world heading into DreamHack winter. But once they got there, things didn't go so smoothly. Hellraiser's picking Fnatic apart. Finally, there's a reply, but it's not enough. Hellraiser's... They take first seat in the group over the favorites. Fnatic 16-14 victory on Mirage. What a game. They only got the second seed, and their quarterfinal matchup saw them face off against LDLC, the French powerhouse that was considered second best in the world at the time. Yes, Jun Shipping, are you ready? It's LDLC versus Fnatic. Make some noise. This could potentially be a grand final match right here. It seems like we have the top two teams in the world about to face off in a best of three. LDLC took the first match. Dust 2, marking the first time they took a Game 1 off of this Fnatic roster. But Fnatic fired back with a statement victory on cash to even the series. The deciding map was overpass. That's it, the perfect game here. It went to the third map just like we were all praying that it would, and this is such a good matchup right now. Overpass is considered a CT-sided map, and Fnatic lost their first T-side half dramatically, 12-3. It is really terrifying at the moment here. Pistol round means everything. Otherwise, Fnatic could end up crashing out of this quarterfinals, essentially, in the final map. That would be a devastating result for them, obviously, on <laughs> home turf here. This is when Fnatic finally deployed the boost. Do they have a weird boost going on currently? Yes, look at this boost. Oh, my, oh God. my God. This is beautiful. He can look over oh. to the restrooms as well. The triple boost allowed Fnatic to see a huge portion of the map from the CT spawn. And though they used it in the pistol round for information, they had lost that too. They are gonna have to fight their way back to Blueprint, the defuse from happening. MBK down on the ramp, and there's the kill. Shox comes in with another one here, and it's gonna be a one on two. He just has to defend, it's a one headshot. He needs to pick up a second one, and he's gonna get it. Double kill, LDLC, they win the round with that B push. Even though Fnatic had the boost available, they were running out of time. After the pistol round, LDLC only needed three more rounds to win the series. Fnatic had enough money to buy a scout, and Olaf Meister's hands from the boost position, that had to be enough. Olaf Meister is still waiting. The patience game coming out again. Spot them coming out of squeak door as well. He's here. He sees them down there. Straight headshot. They have no idea. <laughs> Smith's looking confused and dazed, and it's going to be a follow up headshot. Olaf Meister, you've got to be kidding me. He takes down Kirishima as well. Oh, it finally works, and now Fnatic, if this is the comeback moment for them, and Happy will do a fine job in there, but it is the return. Fnatic 
They pick up the realm. The boost works. The secret strategy immediately reshaped the landscape of the map. LDLC just couldn't figure it out. No, I think he's just jumping. There it is. All of that is raining down death from above. This, this is, is a This is cruel and unusual punishment, without a doubt, from all of Even when LDLC managed to get on a site and out of Olaf's sightline, Fnatic managed to hold him on. The push is going to be for A right now. Grenade on down, and it does hit Smith for 52 damage. JW follow up with a double kill. LDLC completely falling apart right now. Fnatic manhandling them. Smith goes down. <laughs> it's 13 to 7. They tried rushing the A-bomb site to push in before the boost could get any work done, but that failed too. This boost takes so long, they're gonna rush before the boost even happens now. They're all the way up at the A-bomb site, but Crimson is there. Oh no, all of them have a kill as well. They had this so well timed, but it's not enough. The bomb is dropped inside and Fnatic. They are still just a brick wall. There is no getting through here. This was a great idea from LDLC. At 13-13, a broken LDLC finally called a timeout to see if they could figure out a counter strategy. But it wasn't enough. While LDLC eventually figured out where Olaf Meister was firing from, they never managed to eliminate the threat he posed. They are trying to figure out the angle once again here. They're trying to see if they could potentially get a cleaner shot. Look at this, now Happy getting boosted up, but he gets spotted, Olfmeister sees it coming. They've accounted for this, Fnatic. They're one step ahead. The boost gave Fnatic the win. It was their ace in the hole, in the purest sense. It was very hard for them in the first half. They only got three rounds. It was 12 to three in the first half. They lost the pistol round on the follow-up half. That should be the end. That's when you lose. And then they pull up an ace out the sleeve and they do it for just every single round. They're on out, flush against the double and it's down to Smith. No chance at all. Fnatic, they make their way to the semis of another major tournament here. Pronax with a final kill. 16-13, destruction rained down upon LDLC. After the win, Fnatic's coach Devil Walk said in an interview that he believed the better team had won. I mean, I feel sorry for the LDLC guys because they played an amazing match. They played way better than we actually did, but we had more knowledge about the map, so we won because of that. While Fnatic certainly had their fans, especially in Sweden, they had their detractors too. And after the boost, which had proven so dominant, the backlash worsened. It was like such a low, low point. I mean, I have had much hate uh, through through the whole career, pretty much in CSGO. And, but this this thing was just like, it was so much at the same time. And uh, it, it was very, very hard for, for me as well as the others. The DreamHack admins, looking at the boost, tried to figure out if something about it was illegal. And fans on social media pointed to an old 2013 DreamHack rulebook that prohibited so-called pixel boosts. This would have applied in 2013, except the current rules didn't prohibit those kinds of boosts. The rules that have been pasted on uh, a lot of social medias is actually DreamHack Summer 2013 rules. So those rules have not been uh, the rules in, in the tournament. The tournament, has, uh, the tournament rules has been delivered to all the teams in advance of the tournament and in that rule there is no um, um, pixel boosting is okay. The initial call from admins was to replay the second half of Overpass the next day, but the decision was debatable. It's not an exploit. It's in the rules that you can use this boost. It's not considered an exploit. It's clever use of mechanics. They discovered that two aspects of the boost Fnatic used were illegal, but also that a boost that LDLC had used in the first half was also illegal. After hours of demo review, is they found that both Smith's and Olaf Meister's boost took advantage or, or were subject to this one texture bug that, that could be applied to both of them. And so they'd found their way to just say, both of you are at fault actually, and so we'll replay. The exact nature of the discussion that followed between the two teams is still unclear. Thorin claims that LDLC refused to even replay the second half, but the result that fans got wasn't a replay at all. Fnatic has forfeit the match 
between uh, against LDLC. Okay. So this is final and LDLC is through. They're gonna face off against Navi at uh, 4.30. Even though both teams used boosts that turned out to be illegal, it was Fnatic who were made out to be villains. The community decided that they weren't geniuses for their discovery, they were evil masterminds. Like, it's just shameless of them and they're just a top team who doesn't need to do something, uh, doesn't need to do exactly like bug using in order to win and it was unnecessary and they should replay it. In the immediate aftermath of the event, the team wasn't exactly having a good time. Like, let's say it was more, more than half of the, or yeah, more than half of the team, I guess, uh, that wanted to, to quit. Several members of the team considered just quitting. They weren't really known for CS before Go, and now firmly cast as the villains, they were outsiders. But they understand it was way, way, way worse for Crims and all of that haven't. They, they were like coming in and being uh, new, new to the top scene, kinda, you know, and yeah. like being praised by everyone, and then suddenly on you know, one, one game they are hated by the majority, you know. So I think it was hardest for them. But in the end, Fnatic stuck it out, and CS history is all the better for it. In 2015, the same roster went on to win two of that year's three majors, and Fnatic became the only organization with three CSGO majors to their name. The lineup is one of CSGO's truly legendary rosters, driven by a desire to prove their haters wrong and make history. Fnatic are indeed your ESL1 Cologne 2015 champions, winning back-to-back -back ESL events, but of course, more importantly, winning back-to-back -back majors. Now three major titles in their trophy case. The boost itself also stands out. Today, it's hard to imagine that a boost so powerful could ever be discovered and then somehow kept secret for months until it could be pulled out in a major tournament. What's even more unbelievable is that Fnatic used it against their toughest opponent when everything was on the line, and it worked as well as it did. He sees them down there, straight headshot, they have no idea. <laughs> Smith's looking confused and dazed, and there's gonna be a follow-up headshot on the stuff. Now immortalized in graffiti on Overpass, the Olaf boost is a reminder of the power of ingenuity, the pressure faced by esports athletes, and the gray area between what's possible and what's acceptable. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.